Hey y'all, it's me again. Uh, back with some more writing activities for today. And today we are talking about writing different types of sentences. So your goal for today is to say, I can write different types of sentences. Now, this is something that I am still perfecting and I've been writing these kinds of sentences probably since I was in the fourth grade, which was like, I don't know, like 20 years ago maybe? I don't even know how long. We can do that math later. But these are different types of sentences and really what I want you to learn is how to use your resource, right? So we talked about using our resource in the first one, but now it's going back to using that same resource again, okay? And really we're gonna be talking mostly about page eight. So if you wanna go ahead and pause to take out your handy pages, go ahead and pause and I will be here when you get back. Make sure you pause if you're going to look for them. Okay, I'm ready, you ready? If not, hit pause. Okay, just let's go. All right, masterful sentences. Okay, we're gonna talk mostly about four different kinds of sentences. We have declarative, imperative, exclamatory, interrogative, interrogative. I'm not sure. It's either interrogative or interrogative. If you know, go ahead, drop a comment and let me know. These four kinds of sentences help you add variety to your writing. Okay. So the first one we're going to talk about is declarative. This one makes a, sen a statement, right? You're just telling someone a fact. We camped in Arches National Park. That's it. It's a statement, right? I have on shoes. There's lights on in my room. I had two cups of coffee this morning. Those are all declarative sentences. I'm just st making a statement. I'm just telling you straight out. Then we have imperative, okay? Imperative gives a command. Imperative sentences to me are kind of bossy, right? This one says, do not litter in the park, right? If you think about imperative as somebody who's like always trying to tell you what to do, right? They're giving you a command, they are telling you like, for example, I just made an imperative sentence when I said, pause this video and go find your handy pages. That was an imperative sentence. I gave you the command to hit pause, go find your handy pages, and come back. And again, this is on page eight. Okay. Next one is interrogative, interrogative. I don't know how to say that word. I'm really sorry. They ask a question, right? So if I were ask, using an inter interrogative, interrogative sentence, I would say, how do you say interrogative, interrogative, right? I'm asking a question. For example, where is the longest rock arch? They kind of stuck to their theme of being at that, that park, right? But really, interrogative, interrogative is all about asking a question. Now we have exclamatory. This shows some feeling, right? This place is so amazing. I love coffee. I miss my friends, right? Those are all showing emotion. I'm showing you my emotion. And when I end those sentences, I use an exclamation part, exclamation part, exclamation point. And in an interrogative or interrogative, you would use a question mark. I forgot to mention that. And this one would be a, a, a period. So sorry, I forgot those two. You'll see them though. They're in your book. And whoa, I thought we had one more. Was that four? Hold on, let me roll back real quick. Roll, roll back, roll back. There we go. That is four. Okay, so we've got all four of our declarative, imperative, interrogative, inter interrogative, or exclamatory. And you're gonna get lots of chances to practice these and try them out, right? Try a couple and then ask your teacher. I tried to write an imperative sentence. Did I get that right? Your teacher's gonna be stoked that you even asked. So that's great. This is where it kind of gets a little hairy, okay? This is the part that makes me feel like I don't know how to write because I get so caught up in it and I don't think that I understand, but then I found out that it is really simple, okay? Or easier than I make it seem, okay? We have simple sentences which are just one thought, okay? A simple sentence, just one thought, so I have on shoes, that's one thought, okay? A compound sentence 
shares two or more complete thoughts. So if you think about a compound word, a compound word has two complete words in it to make a new word. A compound sentence has two complete thoughts. So for example, I could say, I have on a shirt and I have on shoes. That's two complete thoughts. And they are connected with a conjunction, okay? Conjunction, junction, what's your function? That's like an old schoolhouse rock video that I used to watch as a kid, but I don't remember the next words. A conjunction is a word that we would use to connect to uh, complete thoughts in a sentence. So, and, for, nor, but, or, yet, or so. Those are all conjunctions that you can use to connect two complete thoughts. And then you need a comma before that conjunction. Okay, so when I said that I have on a shirt and I have on shoes, it would be I have on a shirt, comma, and I have on shoes, because I have two complete thoughts. My thoughts are that I have on a shirt and that I have on shoes, but then I need that conjunction in the comma to help break it up, okay? And then a complex sentence is where one thought is incomplete and one thought is complete. This is the one that makes me, made me feel like, I don't know what I'm doing. But it's really not as complex as it sounds. Okay, it's one complete thought and then a partial thought or part of a thought. And then these are connected by a conjunction and then it shows how they're related. So like after, although, because, before, if, unless, until, when, while, right? I could say, after I woke up this morning, I drove to get coffee. After I woke up this morning is my incomplete thought using the word after, where was it? After, and then I drove to get coffee is my complete thought. So I had an incomplete thought and a complete thought. Let's check some out. Okay, a complete thought would be we camped in the park. The compound sentence is the complete thought plus the comma with a conjunction and then another complete thought. In this case, it's we camped in the park that's a complete thought. I could put a period there, but instead I put a comma. So we could see the rock arches, right? Two complete thoughts. I could say either one of those as a sentence, but I made a compound sentence by using a comma and a conjunction, okay? And a complex sentence, okay? Complete thought, we left in complete thought because it started to rain. Right? Because it started to rain is an incomplete thought. We're like left like, well, what happened because it started to rain? Well, we know that they left because it started to rain. There's another example that says, after it rained, the sun came out brightly. Right? So after it rained is an incomplete thought. If I were just to say after it rained, everybody would just be like, and? And what? Like, what else? Tell me more. The sun came out brightly. Right? So those are an incomplete thought and a complete thought. So like I said, if you're thinking, I don't think I'm ever going to understand this, maybe I'll be 32 and not get it either, no sweat. Keep practicing it though. Bring out these handy pages. When you're writing, take these out and challenge yourself. Push yourself to try new things, to try new sentences, and always ask your teacher. Teachers are going to be pumped to hear from you. All right, so we have a complete thought. A complete thought with a comma, conjunction, and another complete thought to make a compound sentence. And then we have the complex, which is a complete thought with an incomplete thought. Okay? And then my friend Baby Yoda showed up, and he says, Yoda sees many chances to practice. I think he's telling your future. So if you really like Baby Yoda, maybe, maybe he's like trying to like give you a little hint or something. And this is it for today. So yesterday's video was like wicked long and good job sitting through it. I hope you made it through the whole thing. Um, this, is, this is really great stuff. This is fun stuff to learn how to do. And the more that you learn now, the easier it will make everything that you work for in the future. And I know that that's kind of hard because you're like, yo, I'm 10. Why do you keep talking to me about my future? Well, because it'll be here before you know it. Because just, it felt like 10 seconds ago, I was sitting in the desk as a student and now here I am as your teacher. So. Take advantage of your resources. Use this, uh, use your handy pages, use your teacher, ask lots of questions, ask your friends questions, ask your parents questions, ask your sister questions, ask your dog questions. Maybe your dog won't give you good advice because they just really talk in short sentences anyway, so maybe not. But go ahead, hit pause, use these resources, and go get them. You guys are gonna be great.